you're cooking over there, Marvin, but it smells really good. <laughs> It smells really delicious. Today I'm going to be answering your art questions and I know I put this video off for a long time but over the summer I was working on a drawing course for you guys and I'm just oh mm, don't even get me started on it. I'm so freaking excited. It's called Timeless Portraits. It's where I show you guys how to draw detailed beautiful portraits. Can I just say I hope that you had a really fantastic summer. For me it was just one of the most biggest growing up and learning experiences of my life just period. Um, I did end up hiring coaches to really help me and just see my progress just shoot up and I've really noticed a lot of changes in myself and my behaviors and I'm just mm, I'm pretty stoked uh, so that's kind of what's going on with me. I'm gonna be answer you guys' questions. Now I know I already answered them via text but today I'm going to be giving a, a blah 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 response in more person so Bessie, you had so many questions and they were all really great. And ah, oh, let's just get into some of them. Uh, so what is it? The best way to improve your art. This is a really great question. And I think that it could be really easy sometimes, even if it's not art, if it's another skill that you're learning, if you're learning something and you're just kind of uh, going with it and you're not being very mindful of what you're doing, it could be very easy for you to forget the thing that you learned. That goes with a lot of things in life, right? So it's important for you to actually keep a journal of some of the things that you're learning throughout your art progress. So I would really recommend keeping a journal of the things that you're learning and being very mindful of what went right as you're drawing. I wouldn't say, I mean, it is important to also note some of the things that didn't work out for you, but don't dwell on the things that um, aren't working out because that kind of puts you in a more negative space than if you're just thinking about the things that went right. So um, I would keep that in mind. Uh, how to get confident about your art? Ooh, this is a really great question. So I think that when it comes to being confident about your art, you can't attach your, it, it, I mean, you can attach your identity a little bit to yourself with art, but it's more of, if you create something and it's not great, you can't say, oh, I'm terrible and I, I, my life is over. Cat, why are you, come here. Mow, mow. You feel confident about your art in my personal opinion, when you're not attached to the outcome, which is something that's talked about a lot in Stoicism, shout out to Pablo, my mentor. <laughs> when it comes, oh, comparison is the devil, okay? Do not <laughs> compare yourself, but again, that's kind of impossible. It's very, you know, it's part of human nature for us to compare ourselves. What did I say in my comment? <laughs> I know I had a good response to this earlier. Oh, that's what I said in my post. I swear, I write sometimes better than I'm able to talk. I don't know why. <clears throat> I really should start a blog. Uh, when I responded to the comment originally, I said that, you know, you can have a Mariah Carey and a Beyonce and they don't detract from each other. And I think that's really important is that you can't really compare yourself to other people because there's always space for you in the art community. I hope the house <laughs> no, it just smells good. It smells like food. <laughs> Making me hungry. Um, let's see, what's the next question? When it comes to getting inspiration, you have to just allow yourself to go back to the things that you just love. Because if you look at a lot of artists' work, it's reflecting things that they're passionate about, things that they're just, that just make their life go round. So for instance, um, I really have been wanting to do this for so long. Uh, there's some music videos and movies that I really love and I want to illustrate them and make them into these creative just pictures. I just ha I have it in my head, okay, but I haven't done it yet. And I think that it's important when it comes to uh, getting inspired is that you don't let go of previous ideas that you have, you collect them. It's good to keep a sketchbook or something like that where you keep all of your ideas. And uh, even if time passes or something like that, you can always refer back to them. So if you have something that's a really neat concept, something really unique, you can always go back and look at your sketchbook and think, okay, what do I wanna create? If you're just looking at a blank canvas, it could be very intimidating if you don't already have an idea for yourself. So personally, I really like to have something that I, want to work on oh yeah that was a really good piece of advice that i gave past heather gave <laughs> i said that um if you're feeling nervous don't tell yourself that you're nervous tell yourself that you're excited because the wiring in your brain is actually really similar so if you just convince yourself that you're excited about something instead of nervous it's going to completely change the way that you're going about the whole thing so that's what i would recommend for that when it comes to uh selling your prints 
you have to keep in mind the audience that you're creating for. Certain prints are just not going to look great on the wall. There's some art little pieces that I've done and they just are not the best looking if they're hung up. They would look better as a mug, for instance. So you have to be really conscious of that. And at the end of the day, when it comes to selling anything, it's really important for you to keep in mind that uh, you really want to create a special connection with your customer. Create an experience for your customer. That's, that's what I would have to say for that. Artistic Movie Man, I always see your comments. You're always so nice, and I just want to say thank you for that. And um, it says, what are the methods of drawing realistic sketches? So when it comes specifically to drawing realistic portraits, I'm so excited that I'm finally having a course that you'll be able to learn all of my methods, everything in just one place, just condensed and nice and just oh, so excited about it. But to give you guys uh, just a few takeaways that have really helped me when it comes to drawing portraits really realistically it's really about getting your shading down and having a really accurate line drawing when you're able to do both of those things that is just the magic where the magic happens and you just have the marriage of these two things that just look so good together so if you work on really creating an accurate line drawing really studying the way that the face looks and the anatomy of the face and being able to get that down, making it as accurate as you can, preferably using a 2H pencil because a 2H pencil is a lighter lead. That's really going to help you out. And then when you start to shade, really push those darks and lights. That is really what's going to make your portrait just come to life and look very realistic. When it comes to paper, I really think vellum paper is probably one of the best papers that you could possibly use. However, it is really expensive and if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend it um, right away. However, you can use a few different papers. I don't know why I'm bleeping them out in my head right now, but I will put them right here so you can check those out. They're really great and I do use them in my course. Kevin, you had a question about having an art website. Now, personally, this is really going to depend on your needs and what you're looking for. I think Etsy is a really great solution to most artists. Artists, however, I think that um, Shopify is amazing. Shopify is so just, it's the bee's knees, man. I don't know. I think it's really great. I mean, I've tried out, I've made a lot of websites in my days, guys, and I just think that out of all of them, Shopify is probably the easiest to create a site besides Etsy. You can kind of put together something on that too. Um, you could even sell art on eBay or Amazon. Like, you could be very creative with it. It just really depends on your needs as an artist, uh, but those are the main ones that I'd probably recommend. And the last question, because I don't want this video to be too long, and I did respond to you guys via responding comment wise the yeah, typing it out okay so <laughs> if you wanted to read those responses to you could go back to that video but i also have a question about what what is it 11 you're 11 years old oh i think it's really great to be able to branch out and try a whole bunch of things if you are a new artist and you're young just have fun mixing different medias try out some color pencil and stuff like that but when it comes to drawing portraits specifically i think that your 2h pencil is your best bet a regular number two pencil your erasers are really going to matter so using a kneaded eraser a block eraser and um oh, my magical um pencil eraser where you can sharpen it and really create a fine tip those things are just really going to come in handy so much. And if you would like to add something that looks a little bit more darker, maybe a 2B pencil. I would probably recommend not using charcoal. <laughs> that was another question I got. How can you make charcoal work with your pencil? I haven't been able to really master that yet. It kind of is a difficult thing. But one thing I have tried that has worked somewhat is being able to dab charcoal on top of the pencil work because otherwise it just doesn't work very well it doesn't stick and it's all crazy so i would actually recommend using a darker lead instead of venturing into doing the charcoal with it but there's other artists who use it successfully so maybe you want to go ask them because i'm not exactly sure so that's it for your questions guys i hope that you are just feeling good and having a great day and if you want to book a private session with me you can go look at the details in my description box. Okay guys, I'm gonna end the video here and I love you so much and I will be seeing you tomorrow in my announcement for my course. So just have a fantastic day and I love you guys so much, bye.